Hello, my name is Pastor Mary Zajac, and on behalf of Pastor Kim Neese and myself, I welcome you to Online Church with Baker Memorial United Methodist Church in St. Charles, Illinois. It is a joy to be able to welcome you to our service today. Our liturgist today is Kathy Ruth. Our music is going to be Deb Stevenson with a beautiful solo on oboe and also Jeff Hunt singing one of our hymns. Pastor Kim is preaching today. And uh, of course, we have many people that we'd like to thank. There are so many people that work together to make this service available each week. I'd like to lift up a few announcements as we begin today. First, we are celebrating the baptisms of May and Grace Masterman last Sunday in our 930 worship service. Second, we are um, changing our focus on the day guest meals for the summer. We have our students prepare the meals all during the school year, but during the summer, congregation members or uh, interested others come and prepare and serve the meal to our day guests. We ask that you arrive at 1115 and you'll be done by about 1230. The sign up list is on the slide and we truly need you to sign up as soon as possible. Next Sunday is our Music Sunday program. We're going to be celebrating our music groups um, all throughout that service. So make sure to either tune in or come in. May 21st, we have two events going on. Sunday Fun Day for our elementary students. That's between 1030 and 1115. And they're going to be doing a thing called Messy Masterpieces. It promises to be a lot of fun. Our last fourth Sunday Baker Youth event for the season also is happening on Sunday, May 21st. It's called Food Frenzy. They're going to be going out around the neighborhood talking to people about our day guest ministry and collecting foods. You can sign up for that on the URL shown on the screen. If you are able, we invite you to be a part of our blood drive on May 18th. We um, a lot of people are able to give blood, but actually don't sign up. So we're giving you an opportunity to sign up and be a part of saving other people's lives. That will be at 2.30 to 6.30 in Wiley Hall. You can walk in if you're not certain you can come, but think you might be able to, or you can just go to that URL and sign up for your slot. And finally, this year, we're going to be doing our Vacation Bible School program as a Tri-City United Methodist Church program. It's going to be meeting at Geneva United Methodist Church from June 27th to 29th in the morning, and it's for ages 4 through 11. We are, at this point, specifically looking for volunteers, so please volunteer, and if you have children, grandchildren, or neighbor's children that you'd like to sign up, please go ahead and do that now as well. As we prepare to enter into a time of worship, I invite you to find a candle that you can light to know that you have the presence of Christ in your midst. And let us bow our heads and go before God in prayer. Gracious God, we are so grateful for this time of worship together. We ask that you would bless this time with your presence in a way that we can perceive and that you would fill us with your spirit so that we might go away from this time refreshed and renewed and ready to serve. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us today. I do hope that you'll join in singing our hymn.
from Colossians 2, 2 through 10. I want them to be encouraged and knit together by strong ties of love. I want them to have complete confidence that they understand God's mysterious plan, which is Christ himself. In him lie hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I am telling you this so no one will deceive you with well-crafted arguments. For though I am far away from you, my heart is with you, and I rejoice that you are living as you should and that your faith in Christ is strong. And now, just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. Let your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. Don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high sounding nonsense that come from human thinking and from the spiritual powers of this world rather than from Christ. For in Christ lives all the fullness of God in human body. So also you are complete through your union with Christ, who is the head over every ruler and authority. This is the word of God for all people. Thanks be to God. Hi, I'm Pastor Kim Neese, and I'd love for us to pray before we start our sermon today. Would you pray with me? Gracious God, we just come before you just thanking you for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, for the gift of faith, and as we learn more about our faith and the steps that we take to grow closer to you and be intentional about that faith, that you will just help us to hear your message and to be able to relate to you in new ways. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, our sermon today is called Ladder of Faith, and I have this ladder here as an example for you to think about our faith as we hear the sermon today. Now, my husband oftentimes uses an analogy when he's teaching his students about a relationship with God and one another. He uses the idea that Jesus is at the top of the ladder, and the two sides as they are open represent either individuals such as friends or couples, co-workers, or even groups of people or groups of communities. This could be representative really of anyone that is in a relationship. Now his analogy is that as you take steps closer to Jesus Christ, you are also intentionally growing closer to each other by default. Now maybe there could be bitterness in a relationship or anger and this may start to fade as you're growing closer to Christ and forgiveness can begin to happen. Or maybe as you take steps in your faith, your relationship both with Christ and the other adds a new sense of value that maybe you didn't see before. You may begin to appreciate those relationships even more. So in his analogy, as we grow in our faith in Christ along the way, Our love for God grows, and so does our love for others. And then I was reading an article from a theologian named Paul Allen, and he also used an analogy of a ladder. He said this, The Christian life is built upon the strength of our faith. Our faith grows rung by rung as we allow our perspective to shift and conform to that of Christ. Now, this process requires humbleness, effort, and the Holy Spirit. And as we grow to trust, we'll see that the Lord is conforming our very spirits diligently to reflect Christ in our everyday lives. Christ stepped into our lives and has given us hope and purpose. Paul Allen says, as we grow deeper and deeper in understanding of who Christ is, we grow in an ability to reflect Christ, and to cling to who Christ is in our lives. So in other words, the more we grow in the Lord, the more it is seen in how we respond to the world in our everyday lives. I actually love the combination of these two analogies as we think about our faith in Jesus Christ throughout our lives. I also think about the fact that this ladder cannot be steady If it's on shaky or uneven ground, we need a solid ground for us to safely walk up each rung. So in our case as Christians, that solid ground and foundation of our faith is Jesus Christ. And each rung leads us towards that continued grace and love that is found in Christ. 
Sometimes we keep walking up the rungs and sometimes we fall back down a rung or maybe even two or three. That's where grace and the support of others helps us to get back up. Well, today is such an exciting day because in our in-person service, we are welcoming in new members to the church body through confirmation. It's a time for each of the youth to confirm their vows that were said for them at their baptism. It's a time when they own and claim their faith for themselves. We'll celebrate next week as we see their pictures of their special time. Now, each of us are also given an opportunity to personally think about the foundation of our own faith in our lives. We can think about being intentional in our relationship with Christ and about supporting, encouraging, and loving one another with grace as we journey and take steps in our ladder of faith as a body of Christ. So as a congregation, when confirmation happens, we're asked, do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment of Christ? If so, we are to say, we do. These are not just words that we say flippantly. They are a reaffirmation or maybe a first-time vow that we make that commitment to Christ as a body of Christ, both individually and as a body. We're also asked this question. Will you nurture one another in Christian faith and life and include these persons before you in your care? And we respond with, yes, we will do so with God's help. We commit to proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We commit to surround not only the persons that are being confirmed, but the whole community of Christ with love and forgiveness so that they may too grow in their trust of God and be faithful in service to others. So we commit also to pray that they and us will be true disciples who walk in the way of life. So as we ourselves trust in Jesus in all things and rely on him in all aspects of our own lives, our lives are strengthened, enriched, and made more full. Some days this may be easier than other days. The fact is we have each other to walk together up this ladder of faith, which means that we are here for one another. And the higher that we are on this ladder, the closer we are also, as you see on the other side, as a community to each other. And it's easier to help others in that community if we begin to fall. Now, in our ladder of faith, we are invited to commit to both Christ and one another. As this relationship with Christ grows, our love for others also grows. As Christians, we commit to grow in faith together and encourage one another along this journey of faith. Now, our passage that was read today was from Colossians 2, 2 through 10. And in it, we witness a letter that Paul has written to the people of Colossae, encouraging them with a few things. One, He's encouraging them to be knit together as a church in love, having confidence in Christ's wisdom and knowledge in their lives. Two, he's encouraging them to seek Christ as their Lord and their found, as the foundation of their life, trusting in him for all things, not the things of this world. And lastly, he encourages them to continue to follow Christ and to grow continuously in their faith. Now, as I think about Paul Allen's analogy of this ladder, he says, as we grow in deeper and deeper understanding of who Christ is, we grow in our ability to reflect Christ and to cling to who Christ is in our lives. Then the Apostle Paul reminds us in Colossians, for in Christ lives all the fullness of God in a human body. So you are also complete through your union with Christ, who is the head over every ruler and authority. There is a lot that is going to come our way in life. 
Yet in Christ lives the fullness of God in a human body. We are complete in that union with Christ. And as we see him as the ruler and authority over our lives, our lives are much fuller. Now the people of Colossae put their faith and trust in Jesus, the risen one, and they are encouraged by Paul to continue in their Christian life, trusting him. It's not a one-time deal. It's actually a lifelong journey. They're encouraged to be in union with Christ so that they grow as believers, solid and stable. In this way, their Christian lives are able to progress and able to give thanks to God in all things, good and bad. These words are also encouragements to us today. No matter where we may be in our own faith, we're called to encourage each other in our faith and to be knit together in love for God's purposes in the world. Today, I invite you to reaffirm your faith in Christ or take a step forward in your relationship with Christ. Take time to really reflect on your ladder of faith in Christ as well as with others. We have the choice to act on a life that is found in Christ as our foundation. And as we come to a close in our sermon, I want us to be reminded that we are called as one body to continue to follow Christ and to grow in love. May our roots of faith grow and our lives be built upon Christ as our solid ground. May our faith grow in the truths of Christ so that we live our lives of faith with Christ in one another. We may also overflow with thankfulness. Let us end our time together professing the Christian faith that is found in the Old and New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty? Let's say together, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Let's say together, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. And I ask, do you believe in the Holy Spirit? And together we say, I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. As we think about our ladder of faith, may we grow closer in our union with Christ as well as with others. Let's continue our worship now as we hear some beautiful music on the oboe played by Deb Stevenson.
Well, we come now to a time of prayer together. So I invite you to just take a moment as we prepare to go before God and remember the needs of the world around you. Think about the news that you've heard lately. Think about what's happening with your neighbors and their concerns. Extend your thoughts to your family and where there are needs there. Think about the people that are invisible to you and what their needs might be as well. And then let's just take a moment to also uh, gather in the celebrations of this week. What do we have to be thankful for? It might be the weather, it might be news about a job, it might be something that's happened among our friends, family, or circle of people we know. It might just be hope in the world. It might be a strong sense of God's presence this week. Let's bring all of those things together as we now turn our hearts and minds towards God in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the gift of faith that lifts us from confusion to the beginning of understanding and from disbelief to trust in your love, your goodness, and your desire to save us through the grace of Jesus Christ. Lord, some of us are early in our faith journey, and so we ask you to hold us close by your side and draw us in if we should ever start to wander off. Some of us have sought to follow your son for many years, and so we ask you to fill us with assurance that conquers doubts and fears and brings us safely through the dark valleys of life so that we may walk in your light ever more confidently. And some of us have deep and strong roots of faith that nurture our souls. And so we pray to be filled to overflowing with your love and your spirit. Fill us so full that we cannot help but share your love with others in ways that opens their hearts and minds to turn toward you. Lord, be with all of us wherever we are in our walk of faith. Grant us ears to hear both your still small voice that guides us and the cries of justice and mercy in the world. Grant us eyes to see both the signs of your ever presence and the signs of your children's pain and suffering. Grant us hands that lift up in praise and prayer and also reach out in care of comfort to our neighbor. Make us into your disciples, Lord, so that we may learn to love you with our heart, our mind, strength, and soul, while we also learn to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. We pray all of these things in the name and the spirit of Jesus Christ, our Lord, as we join together in the prayer that he taught his disciples to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespassers as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I hope you'll take a moment to let us know that you've been here as a part of our online worship community this morning. If you would please go ahead and just enter your um, attendance in the registration uh, online and also enter any prayer requests you might have. I actually go through those every single week. I pray your prayer requests and then I add the ones that are appropriate into our prayer chain. So please take, um, please participate in that. Also, if you feel so moved, we would, of course, encourage you to give an offering that is a part of our Christian faith discipline, recognizing that every gift we have comes from God. And now I just invite you to go about your week in a way that brings peace and joy to others. Walk comfortably in this world, looking around for the signs of God's love, but also looking around for the needs of the world. You have been empowered and equipped to help those who need you. We pray in Jesus' name that you will go to love and serve the Lord. Amen.